Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. All right, so let's say you're driving around town or you're driving through the country and you see an object or a building that really catches your attention and you say to yourself, you know what, I like that building. Uh, I can model that. Well, today's tutorial is going to run through a whole bunch of different tools, starting with using a camera to take some reference images to that we will use in Photoshop and create a blueprint out of, as well as using uh, some uh, of the tools in Photoshop and correcting some of the problems with the photograph that may exist so that we can create, create a good background image, a good blueprint, so that we can get some um, accurate dimensions, scales, and proportions for our um, object that we're going to create. Well, this image that I have here is uh, I created from these two images here. If I had taken a picture like this in my with my camera, I would have, have had to stand back so far in order to capture the whole object in the picture that if I wanted to zoom in, I, would have, I wouldn't be able to see a lot of the detail. So what I did is I stood in front of the building and took a picture of it straight on, and then I rotated my body to the left and took another picture. And we're going to use both of these images and stitch them together in Photoshop. So with one of them selected, hold down Shift, select the other one. I'm going to come up here to Tools, come down here to Photoshop, and use Photo Merge. And I already have a tutorial on this in uh, at Geek at Play under the Photoshop section. And when it comes up with this Photo Merge window, I'm just going to leave it at the default auto and click OK. And Photoshop is going to load both of them in here, and it's going to start aligning them. And then it will blend the two images together. And it's pretty fast, considering what it has to do. All right, so there's our image. I'm going to right-click. I'm going to merge those two images together. Let's create a copy of that. The, the only thing wrong with this image is the uh, it's skewed. The perspective is is thrown off. So in order to make this look like an orthographic image where the whole thing is shot straight on and there is no perspective to it, we're going to use one of the um, transform tools. So I'm going to hold down control and hit T, right click and bring up perspective. Now what I want to do is I can grab either one of these handles. I'm going to start skewing this. But before I do that, I need to establish some straight line references. So I'm going to hit Control R to bring up my rulers. And I'm just going to drag one of these rulers down here just so I can establish a baseline. There we go. Okay, Control T to bring up my free transform tool. Right click and choose perspective. And what I want to do is try to try to align the base of the house with the um, guide right there. And I'm going to go with that for now. Click OK. And eh, we're getting there. I'm going to hold down Control T. Con I'm going to hold down Control and press T and then use the perspective tool again. I'm going to bring this side in. Uh, quite considerably too. Okay, let's try that. Go ahead and click your check mark to commit that. Now let's zoom in and let's see how this whole thing is p playing out here. There is a hump here, so uh, I want to take that into account. I'd say that looks pretty darn good. I'm kind of using my eye here and lining up my reference line here against the the bottom of the door and these uh, these wooden boards across here. I think maybe we need to bring it uh, bring it up a little bit on on this side. So back 
to control T right click perspective and just about that much and let's see I'd say that looks pretty darn good this doesn't have to be perfect but uh, it's certainly a lot better than what we had originally uh, before we started uh, using the free transform tool okay I'm happy with that so control R drop my rulers I'm going to lose those guides that I placed there uh, I'm just going to merge everything down and I'm going to use my crop tool let's crop some of this in bring the bottom in let's bring in the top bring in those sides a little bit and let's see where we are alright I'd say that looks good I'm gonna come over here to image or edit or image adjustments no image size I need to bring the image size down a little bit it doesn't need to be real large uh, in order to just sketch it out in hexagon okay so now let's save for web and devices and I'll choose a compression or quality value of 80 save and we'll call this test okay we're done here with bridge and Photoshop I'm gonna open up hexagon and I'll be right back okay first thing I need to do I need to bring in that image and project it along or against my background grid so come over here to properties and um, I want to enable this bottom grid I'm gonna click on this check mark right there and now click over here and I'm gonna find that there it is it's called test and there it is and I'm gonna come over here to a front view now before we get into sketching this out um, one of the forum members named EZ has a website that he has a whole bunch of hexagon tutorials that he sells and if you want to really and I mean really take your not only uh, not only your knowledge of hexagon but your modeling uh, skills and increase them tremendously I really would recommend checking out his hexagon tutorials here is the address to his website plug that into your browser when you get to this home page you want to click on this icon here that says new click me when you click on it, it will bring you to this page and then just click on the shopping cart here to start shopping come over here to hexagon learning courses and I think he's got uh, one two three four discs that he offers for sale and the type of modeling that uh, Easy does in his tutorials are very technical. Not, I don't mean difficult, but technical in that he does m types of modeling that I don't even do. And so you will not see any of his skills represented in my tutorials he has a whole he has a different type of modeling approach that he uses and uses tools that I I just never touch because mm, I just don't have a need for so if you want to learn a lot about hexagon and a lot more about modeling uh, improving your modeling skills definitely check out these tutorials and and uh, you will be definitely glad you did so let's get back into hexagon here we're in a front view which we have to be in and not a perspective view and now all we need to do is just start sketching this out so I'm gonna come over here to lines come over here to polyline and I'm gonna lay my first point down right there I'm going to hit my spacebar, which will constrain the movement of this tool, and I want to bring it up vertically here, and I'll click there. I'm going to hit spacebar again. Now, instead of constraining the axis of the tool, I'm in kind of a free mode. I can put a point wherever I want, at any angle that I want. And this part of the roof has a, a bend in it, so I'll put a 
point there, put a point there, and put a point there, put one there. Now I need to constrain the movement of this vertically. So I will hit the space bar till I can only come up and down, put a point there, constrain it horizontally, and I'll put a point there vertically, and looks like one could go right there, there. Now free free draw mode, I guess, free hand mode there, there. And all this is, all I'm doing is just sketching out the uh, the profile of the portals. Okay, I'm I'm done. I can join it up. So I'm just going to hit this button right here, which is close. Let me hide my background image. I'm going to select my bottom points here, and I'm just going to drag them down. Okay, now I will select all of them. What I need to do is make sure all of these are even. So over here in the size field along the y-axis, you see there's an offset of 0.545. If I zero that out, it makes all of these flush with one another. Now I can begin. Uh, if, if I want to make con uh, additional adjustments to things, I can continue to do so. So let's say I want to move these over. I, I'm still free to do so. But I think I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far. What I want to do, however, is create these doors here, or windows. So I'll use my rectangle tool and another rectangle tool, and I'll create that one. Now let me turn off my background image. Okay, this window here, it's in its proper location, but it needs to be even with the top of the door. So what I'm going to do is control D to duplicate that. Select both of the uh, select one of them. Drag it right over there. Now I'll select both of them. And I'll just move them both up until they are in their the location where I want them to be. And now I'll just delete. Come over here to select object mode. Now I'll just delete that one. Now this one is where it needs to be. Now in my photograph, it shows that this opening here is offset from this one. They don't line up very well. Well, I don't really think that will go over well if I were to create a 3D model like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these even, even though the original is not. And to do so, I'll do so I'll do it very easily. I'll select that point and its position here along the x-axis is 17 point blah blah blah. I'm going to highlight that control C to copy that number, select these points on this object, highlight its x-axis numeric value, control V to paste in that number. Hit enter and it moves where it needs to go. I'm going to do the same thing, copy this number, control C, Highlight or select both of those. Control V. Enter. Okay, now this door, this opening is perfectly in line with the one below it. Okay, we're coming up here into 14 minutes. I'm going to save my file. And we will finish up with some basic modeling of this in our next video. So that is it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek of Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.